How do you know how much the oil weighs? Doesn't that vary? Uh, no, it doesn't because um, it's based on, on calculations of uh, yeah, it can vary by oil by by um, by how much you actually spray into it and oil pressure, but um, it's spinning so fast that the that the smaller one you can get rid of whatever get everything to weigh exactly, exactly, exactly the same. Um, and the oil acts inside the rotor like, like a torque converter. You know, it will, it will only accept whatever it can accept and will just throw out the rest. And, you know, based on calculations through the years, each rotor carries a different amount. And it's a very well kept secret. These bob weights are the uh, secret, the key to the whole process of, uh, of doing the rotating assembly. These bob weights were actually copied exactly as what they use in Mazda Japan. Um, but you know, you take a, a stock set of rotors. And they'll be off by three or four grams, you know, dynamically. Um, you can move these uprights any length you want, uh, and then move the uh, belt accordingly. And um, the, the fact that the shaft is longer or shorter, it has different resonance frequencies. So. The longer the shaft, the, the lower the RPM at which the, the highest amplitude of the resonance frequency is going to come in. So depending on the length of the shaft, which are other calculations that I've made, uh, they require different RPM to get, to get the perfect balance. The shorter the shaft, because it's more rigid, requires a higher RPM to get the amplitude of the resonance to be high. The higher it is, the easier it is for the machine to pick it up and the more accurate it becomes. But like a car tire, you know, you, it's, 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 if you put a set of tires in a car that are, that are out, of round, out of balance, the car will be fine at 40 miles an hour. At 55, you'll start feeling something. At about 60 to 65, it'll, it'll rack your, your, your teeth out. Right. And then you get going 70 or 80 and it, it goes away. Yeah. And then you get up to about 90 or 100 and it Comes starts right all over again, yeah. but even worse. Those are the amplitudes of, of well, actually, those are the harmonic frequencies. Uh -huh. So you want to catch them at their highest amplitude so that the machine can be most accurate at the point where that harmonic frequency is that its greatest amplitude. On a, the, believe it or not, the, the, the most difficult engine to balance is the three rotor because the, the spacing between two and three is closer than one. So two and three acts, act as one mass, one acts as the other. Four rotor engine, one and three act as one mass, two and four act as the other. Opposed, right? Well, you, you need them to be at 90 degrees so you can put the counterweight over here to compensate for this mass. If they're like, if they're like this, <coughs> then whether you put the, the counterweight here or here, it won't, it won't balance. All right. So one and two are at 180, but one and three are at 90. So you have to, the, the front counterweight will have to balance one and three, the rear counterweight will balance two and four. On a two rotor engine, the front counterweight balances the front rotor, the rear counterweight balances the rear, the rear, the rear rotor. I, you know, I, got, I got a mark on the pulley so it always lines up with a certain position of the crank. It could be random. The whole idea is to take any possible variables away. Um, there's, there's, there's always 
however minute, there's a residual, minuscule amount of imbalance left in either the mandrel or even the, the reluctant, the pickup, you know? It, it's minuscule, it's tiny. But, but if, you, if, if you, when you take it off and put it back together, um, you know, as you go through set, set up, set up, especially with the rotors, that you have to take them off, go to the mill, uh, grind some off and come back when you're dealing with, you know, weights that are heavier than three grams. You know, you actually have to do it with the machine. If it's over a gram and a half, I'll do it with my hand. <coughs> um, so if, if, if the reluctor falls on a different angle, it adds one more variable. So it's one more variable to throw away your repeatability. Repeatability. That is, if you don't have repeatability, you're not going anywhere. Because you can, you know, if, if, you, if, if you're, you're repeating, boom, 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 and you make an improvement, and all of a sudden you take the piece off and you come back, and it's not at least where you were before, then obviously something's lost. wrong. Yeah. Either, either the rotor is wrong on the mandrel, or, or something has shifted on your setup. Whatever the hell it is, you got to find it. You just can't go by what the machines all of a sudden says, because obviously you threw in a new variable. You take the piece off and you put it back on, you threw in a new variable. Maybe you picked up some dust. Maybe you picked up some of the lines that you're grinding off. Right. So you, you, mu you must know, or better yet, you must knowing which you, you must be looking for a certain result right always if that result is not there and that only comes from experience then obviously you gotta go out and find what happened to the setup it's like they say in computers crap in crap out if all of a sudden you add in a piece of crap then all, all the electronics and the, the, the uh, balance all you're gonna do is interpolate what you fed into it if you fed into a it, crap it's gonna spit out more crap so you, you may end up actually adversely balancing the motor out of the, the, out of round. I mean, out of, out of, out of balance rather than, than in balance. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. You must know what results you're looking for. And this what is why I getting. asked you about the oil, because it seems to me like that could fluctuate pretty, you know, on it, a it, large... It, it does and it doesn't, and that's why this, I said the oil pressure has to do with it, because the more oil pressure you crank in the motor, the more it'll spit in. So you would think that that cavity, just like a torque converter, will fill up some more. But, since the rotor is spinning, it's always, you're, you're, you're pouring in like, like a glass of water, but you're, you're, you're swinging it, and it's, you know, depending on the speed, the centrifugal force is gonna dump a certain amount out. And that's what happens to the cavity of the, of the intermediate housing. It's constantly dumping back into the crankcase. So, yes, there, there, there's probably RPMs that, there, that uh, there's more oil than, than less, but at those RPMs, the balancing doesn't become critical. The right. It becomes critical. At the high you're RPMs. really, really spinning the shit out of it. And then most of it's pushed into whatever cavity you... Exactly. And the rest is going to be spelled out. Yeah. Just like a How do you know, though, what that number is? I mean, I know you say it's a closely guarded secret, but have people done experiments yes. on it where they've yes. actually been able to weigh the, the amount of weight? That, yeah. That, yeah. That, yeah. That, and then have tried have more and have tried less. And it all has to do with the volume, the internal volume of the rotor. Right. 12 A's require a certain amount. 13 B's require a certain amount. Are Is it always the same then for uh, every... Well, yeah. I mean, granted, because of core shift, um, every single rotor is slightly different. So it comes to a point where infinitely perfect is infinitely impossible, you know? But you can get it so damn close that it's almost like a perpetual machine. You know, when these things are really, really, really balanced perfectly, you rev them up, you go zing! They don't want to go and come back down. They stay out there. You know? Hmm. Now is basically making sure that that magnet 
that is going to pick up the rotation of the shaft is dead on center. Because if it's not, like right now it's swinging 4,000 in one direction and 11, 13,000 in the other. That sucker's going on an orbit, it's obviously going to be affecting the rest of the balance. Yeah. It's something that nobody does. Really? Nobody does this. You know? People have told me, oh, well, you know, why don't you just drill a recess on the mandrel and uh, so that the magnet always falls in the same position. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of shops do that. Um, there's a guy in West Palm Beach, he's an old NASCAR guy, really brilliant. This guy does uh, uh, custom, I mean, really true custom engines. He, he rebuilds like Model A um, uh, engines from like the 20s and stuff like that, where he actually has to make the bearings. Incredible talent. And put the Babbitt in the laptop. Anyway, I used to balance at his place. I used to leave my house at 4 in the morning because he opens at 7 sharp. I used to leave my house at 4 in the morning so that I could you know, drive an hour and a half out of there and make sure that I was there at 6.30 when he gets there because he opens at 7. And if I'm not there by the time he opens up and he starts with something, that's it. I wasted my time. And, um, you know, one day I took the same little setup like this and I set it up just like I have this thing here. You know, and I put an indicator on it, and I had him balance one of his VAs, and then I put the indicator on the magnet, and, and, and got it center, and had him spin it, and the, 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 the results were totally different. The rotary engine is, is the most difficult engine there is to balance. It's the smoothest running engine there is, short of a turbine. But it's extremely difficult to balance because you must take the part on and off, on and off, on and off all the time. And every time you go on and off, you add a variable to it. Right. It's not like on a V8 or a four-cylinder, you weigh all your pistons. They weigh the same. Whether they're a little bit from one side or the other, it doesn't matter. They weigh the same. You weigh all their rods, they weigh the same. You get your, your, your reciprocating masses all to weigh exactly the same. Your target is your lightest one. Okay. Then you set up your bob weights for that weight, and you spin it, and you just you drill on on the the crankshaft exactly as I'm going to drill on these counterweights. But on these engines, oh, and that's another thing. Those uh, those uh, bob weights are like B blocks. They come together like this. They they, they bite the crank, and then you start adding washers to it. On this, it's just totally different. You saw me go through the whole uh, uh, operating and setup of the, of, the, of the bob weights. But when you're spinning the rotor, you're, 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 you're dealing with two planes that have a natural wobble. So, you know, um, sometimes you have to, you know, if, if, if you're real close and you can do it while you're on the machine, you save yourself a lot of headaches. But, you know, you may end up with one rotor that's five grams off on one side and and uh, a gram and a, quarter, and a quarter on the other. Well, what ends up happening is if you correct the light side first, and then you go back to the heavy side, take it off, off the, uh, the balancer, go to the, to the mill or your, your rotary table, come back on, everything went dead. That is the reason why, and again, you're dealing with natural wobbles and you're dealing with invisible forces. That's the reason why I balance with clay, adding clay to the opposite side of the heavy spot. That way, and I do that on the heavy side first. That way I know that if that heavy side is balanced and I can come back and balance the light side, that side can't change on me regardless of what I end up doing. And it will change the minute I take it off and put it back on. The numbers just will go out the window. But if I begin to bring the heavy side back in, well, it'll start coming right back down to what they were originally. Again, it comes down to eliminating as many factors as you can. The machine will go through a through a, a test. Then, if everything within the test is good, then it'll go through the run. Based 
and that rotor weight, it's heavy right here. Instead of being heavy here, it's heavy here. Meaning that there's not enough weight on this side to balance this mass. And on this side, I got the same fucking problem. It's heavy right here. Or rather, the heavy spot is here, which means that I don't have enough mass to balance on this side to balance the weight that's over here. So, um, this is the lighter uh, weight rotor, I mean uh, counterweight. I'm going to go ahead and put the other one on. This was 1890. I got 70 grams here. Or. Uh, 64 grams heavier here. Mechanical driven fuel pump and, and uh, accessories in the front that use cog belts and stuff like that, then I, it's really essential uh, to use that whole pulley set. But by basically running this aluminum pulley, which doesn't weigh anything, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm balancing what is within the engine. All my race engines use the stuff of a pulley setup, so... The drive sump systems, everything is internal. There's nothing externally driven by a belt, by the belt except for the alternator. And on the uh, rear engine cars, like the 767 or any of the prototypes, the alternators are driven off the uh, hash shafts, outside the, you know, past the gearbox. Hmm. Why do they do that? Um, to reduce the parasitic drag on the engine. Change that rear counterweight. <coughs> Save it for the heavy. First off, going to check that the front is correct. Then I'm going to try some other rear counterweights that already have been reduced on the on the heel of the, of the counterweight to see if I can get it in now. You know what I mean? Realistically speaking, 33 grams is quite a bit to take out. We, we hit it on the spot, exactly one half of a gram, which is exactly where I want to be. Now I'm going to go back and correct the back side, which we're off by a gram and a half. Hopefully the drill will be short enough to clear it. Now we've got to change drills. Big advantage of having a quality drill uh, mill like uh, the 
wrench board is that you have flexibility of being able to shift the head anywhere you want it. And you know it's funny, but that's that's exactly where Mazda had drilled it. Exactly where the machine says it's heavy, that's exactly where Mazda drilled it. Notice that there's no other mark right. when they did it from factory. So they're, they're pretty close, they're pretty good. Um, with the actual counterweight balance, the rotors are always way off. But then again, the rotor also spins at one third the speed, so it's really not quite as critical for a street engine. That's why their, their average balance on, a, on the rotor, it's within five grams. That's, that's very acceptable for a street motor. So now, we have another problem. It's really not a problem, but we don't want to drill where there already is a drill spot. So I'm going to try to take out half a gram on either side of that spot. Why exactly is that a problem to drill into a drill hole? Well, the deeper you go, the more you reduce the radius and then the numbers don't quite match up. Okay. And, you know, if you're going to do it, you got to get it dead perfect on their center. Right. Otherwise the whole thing's just start to shake. So I'm gonna take out, we're looking for our gram and a half, 1.6 grams. I'm gonna take out half a gram on both sides of that spot. Yeah, you 
can't because, like I said, there's always a residual and extremely minute residual amount that you can't get out. It gets so small that the machine can't point where it's at. Zero point zero eight, which is the Spin it one more time, but that's about as close to perfection as you can get. The rotors were within what, two tenths as well? Or? Yeah, rotors were within two tenths. Does that like make, multiply the effect here if they're two tenths in the right or wrong direction of, of the balance? On the counterweight or no? Not really because the rotors are spinning um, on the journal. Uh, so that dynamic balance uh, is, is so perfect, it's not going to make any difference. What really will make a difference <coughs> is if the rotors don't weigh the same uh. rotor to rotor. That will all, all, obviously affect the butt. I told you I nailed it. I nailed it. <laughs> So this thing should be like a perpetual motion engine. Yes. Huh? It's, <laughs> it's not going to happen, it would just stay there. It's not going to want to slow down. That's nice. Well, that's it. Now we got the whole balance assembly for our uh, hybrid uh, RX-7, RX-8 engine that's going into our project car. This will be a um, third generation RX-7 engine block with low compression rotors, 3 millimeter seals with an RX-8 front cover, custom made front counterweight that spins inside the front cover because the RX-8 engine is actually physically longer. And uh, that way we can hang the air conditioner and um, have every function, including the um, fly-by-wire uh, throttle body that comes in the RX-8, will be able to work with an RX-7 engine block that can A, take a lot more power and be run much cooler because it doesn't have that uh, funky uh, side port exhaust system. Are you doing any porting work on the housings? Uh, we're going to port the center housing uh, to give it a little more punch uh, on the primary side. The, uh, the secondaries, I'm going to leave them the stock. Again, the idea here is to prove the concept. Um, the, the secondary ports on a third gen block are very, very, very generous, very healthy. Uh, in fact, for full-blown race, race engines, all you really have to do is uh, just kind of clean up the port runners and give it a little bit more overlap. Uh, so um, it's just a matter of how much boost we want to run to get up to the 400 horsepower range, which is more than what the transmission of the RSA can take. So, um, you know, again, going back to the original concept here is to 
double the power of the RX-8 and still keep it uh, perfectly streetable and idling like a uh, Cadillac. Okay, that's 300,000 grand. I got a 300,000 of an inch feet. And that book will be around seven grand. Correction. If I find that I need to take out more, I'll simply come back to it.